Good afternoon. Yeah, Don, can you dial it back just a bit? Thank you. Um, we have two announcements, and I'll say the first one while you're coming forward. Come on up. The council is going to ask for a congregational meeting in two weeks to vote on the well. In two weeks to vote on a well. This is the first of the three announcements that will occur this Saturday, next Saturday, and then the Saturday of the vote. So please come prepared to vote on whether or not we drill the well. Okay, on behalf of the Emanuel Lutheran Church, Council President Jeff Patsky and the Council Vice President myself, I am announcing a special congregational meeting for Saturday, August 6th at uh, 2012, 22. After the church service on the Emanuel Church land, and the picnic. The picnic starts at 4 p.m., church service 6 p.m. Afterwards, we'll have a short meeting to uh, vote on the uh, acceptance of uh, bids for the will, or for the well, not will, <laughs> well. Thank you. Neither of us planned on doubling up, but you've had two announcements, so don't forget it, okay? <laughs> um, after the, the greeting, we're briefly going to have a prayer of confession, and then we will move on with the gathering hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, you know our sinfulness, and you love us, and you've sent Jesus to die and rise for us. As we present you with our sins, we we're glad to receive from you Jesus' righteousness, and we pray that Jesus' righteousness fill us and lead us to walk in his life. We ask this in Jesus' name, and all God's people say, Amen. Please rise for our gathering hymn, verses 1 and 3 of God is Here. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
God, your almighty power is most clearly shown in your mercy and pity. Multiply your grace that we may run to your promises and be made to share in your heavenly joy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the hearing of the word. The first lesson is from Genesis chapter 18, beginning with verse 17. The Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham what I am about to do, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him? For I have chosen him, that he may command his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing righteousness and justice, so that the Lord may bring to Abraham what he has promised him. Then the Lord said, Because the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and their sin is very grave, I will go down to see whether they have done altogether according to the outcry that has come to me, and if not, I will know. So the men turned from there and went toward Sodom, but Abraham still stood before the Lord. Then Abraham drew near and said, Will you indeed sweep away the righteous with the wicked? Suppose there are 50 righteous within the city. Will you then sweep away the place and not spare it for the 50 righteous who are in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to put the righteous to death with the wicked, so that the righteous fare as the wicked. Far be it from you. 
Shall not the judge of all the earth do what is just? And the Lord said, If I find at Sodom fifty righteous in the city, I will spare the whole place for their sake. Abraham answered and said, Behold, I have undertaken to speak to the Lord. I who am but dust and ashes, suppose five of the fifty righteous are lacking. Will you destroy the whole city for the lack of five? And he said, I will not destroy it if I find forty-five there. Again he spoke to him and said, Suppose forty are there. He answered, For the sake of forty, I will not do it. Then he said, Oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak. Suppose there are thirty are found there. He answered, I will not do it if I find thirty there. He said, Behold, I have undertaken to speak to the Lord. Suppose twenty are found there. He answered, For the sake of twenty, I will not destroy it. Then he said, Oh, let, me, oh, let not the Lord be angry. And I will speak again, but this once. Suppose ten are found there, he answered. For the sake of ten, I will not destroy it. And the Lord went his way. When he finished speaking to Abraham, and Abraham returned to his place. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. The psalm is 138, and we'll read it responsively. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before Before the the gods, gods, I I will will sing sing your your praise. praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple and praise your name. Because of your love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name. When I called, you answered me. You increased my strength within me. All the kings of the earth will praise you, O Lord. When they have heard the words of your mouth. They will sing of the ways of the Lord. That great is the glory of the Lord. Though the Lord be high, he cares for the lowly. He He perceives the haughty from afar. Though I walk in the midst of the trouble, you keep me safe. You stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand shall save me. The Lord will make good his purpose for me. O Lord, your love endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. The second reading is from Colossians chapter 2, starting at verse 6. Therefore, as you receive Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. See to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the world, and not according to Christ. For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells boldly, and you have been filled in him, who is the head of, the, of all rule and authority. In him also you were circumcised with a circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith in the powerful working of God, who raised him from the dead. And you who were dead in your trans passes and the uncircumcision of your flesh God made alive together with him having forgiven us for all our trespasses by canceling the record of debt that stood against us with its legal demands this he set aside nailing it to the cross he disarmed the rulers and authorities and put them to open shame by triumphing over them in him therefore let no one pass judgment on you in questions of food and drink or with regard to a festival or new moon or a Sabbath. These are a shadow of the things to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. Let no one disqualify you, insisting in the cynicism and worship of angels, going on in detail about visions, puffed up without reason by his sensual mind, and not holding fast to the head, from whom the whole body, nourished and knit together through its joints and ligaments, grows with a growth that is from God. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God.
Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 11th chapter. Glory, Glory to, to you, you, O Lord. Lord. Now, Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. And he said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone who is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation. And he, Jesus, said to them, Which of you has a friend who has a friend will go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, load me three lo lend me three loaves, for a friend of mine has arrived on a journey, and I have nothing to sit before him. And he will answer him from within, Do not bother me, the door is now shut, and my children are in with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, yet because of his impudence, he will rise and give him whatever he needs. And I tell you, ask and it will be given you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks it will be opened. What father among you, if his son asks for a fish, will instead of a fish give him a serpent? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If then you who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you O Christ. Christ. Please be seated. Would you pray with me? Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in us the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and we shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit instructs the hearts of the faithful, grant that by that same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever rejoice in the Spirit's consolations through Christ. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. And all God's people say, Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. In a rather large business, three of the executives ducked out one Friday early afternoon for a lunch at a restaurant just around the corner. The head of the human relations, the head of sales, and their boss. They cut through an alleyway to get to that restaurant, and along the way, the head of HR noticed that there's something interesting, some metallic thing in one of the dumpsters that had an open lid. So she reached in and dragged it out and really seemed to have some weight, some patina, and she, she rubbed it a bit, and a genie popped out. And this genie said, I'm just so grateful that you released me from my prison that each of you can have one wish. And the head of HR said, oh, I want a house in Jamaica on the shore, and I want a boat, and I want enough money to live the rest of my life there in comfort. And the genie, a very pleasant female, said, you have that wish, and poof, the lady was gone. And the head of sales said, I want to marry a supermodel who's rich, somebody who has a house in, in New York, in London, in Paris, and in Hong Kong. And the genie said, you do have that wish now. Poof, the guy was gone. And their boss stopped and thought for a moment, and he said, I want those two clowns to be back in the office at 8 on Monday. 
there is a moral to this story. And the secular moral is always let the boss speak first. That strikes me as appropriate when it came to our last Sunday's text about Mary and Martha. Martha just kind of blew off at Jesus as we heard last Saturday. And it's always better to let the boss speak first. The issue of the boss speaking first is something that Abraham is exploring. Now, as we hear this, we're hearing about struggle, and we find struggle in all three of our readings. In this reading, though, I want you to be aware that Abraham is not conning our Heavenly Father. And even worse, Abraham is not bargaining. My wife is firmly convinced that this is bargaining, and when I ask her what's Abraham offering, she doesn't have anything to answer me. There's something else going on. And what I see is not somebody saying, well, I'll give you this if you give me that, but rather, Abraham is finding out what God's limits are. It's something we see in our children and our grandchildren. Have you noticed that they test our limits? And that's part of their job, to test boundaries, and it's our job to hold the line. Not permanently, not rigidly, but in general to say yes or no, and to give them stability in a life that can be so chaotic. The Lord decides, and where it's printed in large case, uppercase, L-O-R-D, that's Yahweh um, in Hebrew. And Yahweh, the Y-H-W-H, the sacred tetragrammaton, Yahweh's dithers in a sense and says, shall I tell Abraham? Yep, got to do it. And so the men turn from there. Remember, there were three men, but God stays there talking with Abraham. And Yahweh says, there's a mess going on in Sodom and Gomorrah, and I'm going to go down, I'll check it out, and I will know. And Abraham asks if there are 50 righteous, so the keem, righteous ones, and it doesn't mean perfect, it means people who are walking the walk and talking the talk, talk of following our Heavenly Father. If there are 50 righteous, are you going to kill them as well as the evil? And he says, the God of justice doesn't do injustice. And Yahweh says, okay if there are 50. And then Avram, as he, Abraham, as he successively asks, asks, what about 45? And he's properly cautious. He's not demanding. He's not bargaining. He's not trying to fool God in any way. He just says, what about 40? God says, okay. I just hear myself when I'd ask my parents, can I stay out till nine? They'd say, okay. What about eight, about 9.30? Okay. And Abraham asks, what about 30? What about 20? What about 10? It is striking to me that he stops there. 10 for Orthodox Jews is the number of so the Kim, righteous men, who gather to be able to pray. It's a minyan. We Christians talk about where two or three are gathered, Christ is with us. They talk about the minyan, the ten. But hear what Abraham doesn't ask. He doesn't ask about five. We don't know what God would have said. But what I do know is... In Jesus Christ, it comes down to one, and that's good enough. For the sake of that one righteous man, God with us, Immanuel, for the sake of that one, his blood cleanses us from all sins. 
it is a day of struggle. And in that second reading, did you notice that our text begins with the word therefore? I always get uneasy when words, the word therefore starts up the reading, what went before. Paul wrote, for I want you know, to know how great a struggle. Hear that word struggle. Struggle I have for you and for those at Laodicea and for all who have not seen me face to face, that their hearts may be encouraged, being knit together in love, to reach all the riches of full assurance of understanding and the knowledge of God's mystery, which is Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Christ is all in all. I say this, he concludes, in order that no one may delude you with plausible arguments, for though I am absent in body, yet I am with you in spirit, rejoicing to see your good order and the firmness of your faith. And therefore, Paul writes, as you received Christ Jesus the Lord, walk in him. We're called to talk the talk, and Paul reminds us we're called to walk the walk of faith, to be those righteous people that God and Abraham were talking about, righteous in Christ Jesus, rooted and build up, built up in him, and established in faith just as you were taught. Like Pastor Han said last week, we're not sure what was going on in that congregation to which Paul writes, that congregation in Colossae. What we do know is it involved some Judaizing, some more of the old rules. You got to have more rules to make you more holy, apparently. And then it gets worse. And Paul talks about that worse. After he talks about Jesus, for in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily. And because of him, he says, you've been filled with the Holy Spirit. You've been circumcised, not with flesh. You've been buried with him in baptism and raised with him through faith in the powerful working of God, the Father who raised him from the dead. Dead and alive. Guilty. And in this one righteous man, Jesus Christ, we are saved. Canceling the record of debt that stood against us with its legal demands, forgiven all our trespasses. This he set aside, nailing it to the cross, disarming the rulers and authorities and putting them to shame, triumphing over them in Jesus. And therefore, don't get snarled up in the minutiae of food and drink and festivals and new moons or Sabbath and asceticism, which means making your body hurt, and worship of angels and yammering on and on about visions and puffed up without reason. Instead, Paul writes, hold fast to this righteous man. Hold fast to the head from whom the whole body grows with the growth that is from God. This righteous man talks with us and talks about his righteousness and ours in the light of the cross. The disciples say, John taught his disciples to pray. Teach us to pray. Now they, know, they knew the Shemona Ezra, the 18 blessings, 18 benedictions, of which there are 19. They kept the name even after they added one. And they know the Jewish prayers, but they wanted Jesus to give them the prayer that he recommends. And it's a simple one, both in Luke and Matthew. Father, that's how we address God. Father, Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our ophilemata, the, the debts or sins or trespasses. For we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us. Then comes that phrase that can be quite difficult. 
Do not lead us into temptation. In Greek, kai meis, meis en case hemas eis perosmon. Perosmon, peril. Don't lead us into, um, I don't like the word temptation any more than Luther did. Luther in his small catechism said, God indeed tempts no one to sin. Let's be clear on that. And I like perhaps the more modern translation, save us from the time of trial, because in Perasmon there's an overtone of eternity. There is an overtone of end times and eternal consequences. Save us from this day of judgment. And then, in three different sections, Jesus talks about prayer. He says, look, you go to bed, and everybody got into the same bed. Bar the door, get into bed. And a friend comes banging, saying, I need some bread, flat bread, kind of pita bread, if you will. I don't have any, and I have a friend coming, and I need it. Go away. Have you ever said that to anybody? If somebody bangs on your door at 1 o'clock, I bet you'd say it. At least I hope you'd say it. Go away. It's too late or too early. But Jesus says, I tell you, though he will not get up and give you anything because he is your friend, yet because of his, well, the translation we use says impudence, it means persistence or brazenness, just relentlessness. He keeps banging and filing just to get rid of the guy. You give him some bread so you can go back to sleep. And your kids and your wife. And Jesus then talks about asking, seeking, and knocking. And as he does, I hear a typical Jewish expression talking about Heavenly Father, this Father. Ask, and your Father will give it to you. Seek, and your Father will make sure you find it. Knock, and your Father will open it to you. God's name was so holy you didn't use it in Jewish circles of that day, and even in some of today. For one who asks receives, one who seeks finds, and one who knocks has the door open. And then Jesus talks about what that means. He keeps reminding us about to whom we pray. And even though it's perfectly legal, you heard me pray, come Holy Spirit. And sometimes I pray, Lord Jesus, but my default prayer is, dear Heavenly Father. That's the way Luther taught me to pray through my dad. Jesus talks about what Father means. If a son asks for a fish from the lake, he's not going to give him an eel. That's the image, something that looks like a fish, but it isn't. Or if he asks for an egg, he gives him a scorpion, and that's because a little white scorpion can look like an egg when it's all curled up. Earthly fathers know what not to do. How much more, Jesus says, will your heavenly Father give you the Holy Spirit when you ask him? What we ask for is usually healing, things, protection. We ask for all kinds of things, and that's good. But do we ask for the Holy Spirit? As you pray for the call committee, for the council, as you pray for that pastor God will be sending us, I hope you're praying for the Holy Spirit for you, for the call committee, for the council, and for that pastor whom God is sending us. I know too many congregations who pray for a particular pastor or particular type. Like Oscar Wilde said, there are two tragedies in life. One is not getting what you want, and the other is getting it. I think it may be better to pray, your will be done, not my will be done. 
Three readings set in a context of struggle. Have you noticed that we are struggling today? Oh, the Omicron variant isn't enough. Now we have monkeypox, right? And our economy and our international relationships. And we've been selling oil to China. Hmm. And the mess going on as we look at the January 6th investigation and the turmoil in our families, in our work settings. My friends, this is a time for prayer. Just like it was in Abraham's day. Just like it was in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ, whose blood cleanses us. Just as it was in St. Paul's day. The day we struggle. Some of the Christians in Africa say that baptism protects you. Another group of the Christians in Africa say, when you're baptized, you kind of get a target painted on you because the devil's not interested in those he already has. We are in the midst of what Luther called Anfechtungen, temptations, struggles. God bless us that our struggle is not with God, and Abraham was not struggling with God. He was struggling with himself. St. Paul was not struggling with God. He was struggling with misguiding teachers and with people who became sheeple and followed them. And Jesus is struggling to grow his disciples in walking the walk like we struggle today. God bless you as you walk the walk through struggle, walk the walk through danger, and we heard about dangers in that Good Samaritan a couple weeks ago. As we walk the walk through this world, which is not necessarily kind or gentle, which is why Paul calls us to be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving, and as we walk through the valley of the shadow, the life everlasting, and all God's people say, Amen. Please rise. Our hymn of the day is Day by Day. Lord, attend me day by day, day by day, send me, draw me near to my heavenly goal, love divine beyond all mortal measure, brings to naught the burdens of my quest. Savior, lead me to the home I treasure, where at last I'll find eternal rest. Day by day, I know you will provide me strength to serve and wisdom to obey. Seek your loving will to guide me for the paths I struggle day by day. I will fear no evil of the morrow. I will cross in your enduring grace. Save your help me bear life's pains and sorrows. Till in joy I behold your face. Oh, what joy to know that you are near me when my burdens grow too big to bear. Oh, what joy to know that you will hear me when I come, O oh Lord, to you. Yeah. 
We confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for the prayer. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Merciful Father, you invite your children to come to you in prayer. Teach us to pray with humble hearts and whole spirits that we, like Abraham before us, may be faithful in interceding on behalf of others, particularly those whose hearts have turned away from you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you shower your people with blessings upon blessings, too numerous to count. Shower rain upon the fields of those who grow crops in the right portion, that harvests may be plentiful and all may share in your abundance. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. Gracious God, you know the battles we face every day. We ask that you bring healing to this world, torn asunder by violence, bloodshed, and war. Sustain veterans, survivors, and all those who have suffered the effects of war. Grant them hope, peace, and the safety of rest in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Father, you are the source of healing and wholeness. We humbly ask for your healing hand upon all who are sick and those recovering from surgery or illness, especially all those who are now named before you either silently or aloud. Grant them healing, grant them wholeness in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting not in ourselves, but in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. We sing our communion hymn.
We pray. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord, and all God's people say, Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to, to give, give him thanks, thanks and, and praise. praise. Holy God, our maker, redeemer, and healer, in the harmonious world of your creation, the plants and animals, the seas and stars were whole and well in your praise. When sin had scarred the world, you sent your Son to heal our ills and form us again into one. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night when he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given to you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, All of you drink of it. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his acts of healing, his body given up, and his victory over death, we await that day when all the peoples of the earth will come to the river to enjoy the tree of life. Send your spirit upon us in this meal, as grains scattered on the hillside become one bread. So let your church be gathered from the ends of the earth, that all may be fed with the bread of life, your Son. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Thy, thy will be done earth on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us Lord, this day our daily bread. bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please take the wafer, unseal that one end of your package. This is the body of Christ given for you, and when you've unsealed it, please eat it. Please unseal the liquid of the package carefully. The blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. We sing the canticle. We pray. Almighty God, you provide the true bread from heaven, your Son, Jesus the Christ, our Lord. 
Grant that we who have received the sacrament of his body and blood may abide in him and he in us, that we may be filled with the power of his endless life now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Our hymn is hymn number 730, My Soul Proclaims, verses 1 and 3. Peace, serve the risen Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, God. to God. Don't for, don't forget there's treats in the in the fellowship hall. 